try to walk in it. You know, you know how to walk. You walk in blamelessly, living a holy life before all people. Um, I would like to start off with a prayer. Let's bow down our heads. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for today. Lord, touch us, help us. That we, we should not only be hearers of the word, or preachers of the word, maybe doers of the word. It was the patience, the commitment, the endurance to go through all things. Keep standing to the end. So, like, Father, when you come back, you will not be ashamed of your glorious coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Today, um, we had a topic. Uh, we had a topic last time, and we were talking about. Uh, you know, I think overall being single. That's the. Uh, please, sir, uh, hold on. Please give me a second. Let me let us know. After uh, being single, and now like this, uh, most of us. Yeah, we have uh, abandoned a lot of things. We have sacrificed a lot of things that we enjoyed doing when we were you know, in the world. And during this time, we're going to face this persecution, and a lot of things are going to be very, very hard for us. Uh, for example, most women they have given up their the makeup, the earrings, and all those things. And uh, you will see persecutions from different family members. Maybe you know they used to have a boyfriend, the boyfriend you know tells to uh, give up on them because they might call them ugly, they might say they will never get married. And sometimes this some people will yield to this pressure. They will stand only for a little while. And uh, being single being a single Christian and trying to walk in the way of God is never easy. It's a very, very struggle. So, today we're going to be talking about the holiness revival movement. Hold on a second. Sorry, I just got this real quick. That is high tech. It's just. Uh, okay, first of all, uh, I want to start off with, uh, I would like for, um, please if you have the King James copy, I'd like to give the, the one from the King James Bible, and uh, that's the commission, so. First Corinthians chapter seven, verse thirty two. Amen. All right. Um, I'm reading from. It says, but I would love, I would have you without carefulness, that he that is unmarried cares for, this, for the things that belongs to God, how he may please, please the Lord. Should I forgive? You're good, you're good, amen. And it's telling us in the word, first Corinthians 32, is that he that is married, care for the things that we want, the things that will please the Lord. Uh, so, as a single person, you have your best responsibilities. You know, the only thing that you're worrying about is case, about pleasing the Lord. 
there was there were a few times where Paul the apostle, you know, he said that you know, the people that are single, he rather than be like him because now like these people don't understand that you're too late in the end time. Being in ungodly relationships will take time away from you. Instead of reading the Bible at night, you're at 12 o'clock a.m. and 12 o'clock a.m. You're worrying about you know, how you got your boyfriend upset, how the dinner did not go right, you know, how uh, you didn't give her the best uh, uh, present ever. Instead of worrying about your salvation, you know, you're, you're just sitting on the bed, what you're going to get your girlfriend for Valentine's Day, you know, aka fornication day. So, as a single man, he said that what he that is married care for the things that belong well, he that is unmarried care for the things that belong to the Lord and how he may please the Lord. You're not looking out to please your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you know, all those ungodly relationships. You're calling each other, singing, yuri, yuri, lovey, lovey, dovey, dovey, all those things. All those things that need to be gone, they need to be gone. Now you're caring for the things that are like, pleases the Lord. You're not lost in after being things. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Please, brush a little smooth. Matthew chapter 5, verse 28. Matthew 5, verse 28. It says, it said, um, But I say unto you that whosoever looks on a woman to last after her have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Amen. Now you have a lot of single people today, you know, they're lost in after women, they're busy lost in after women. You know, they're saying, because I am free, you know, because I am free, I am I'm able to, you know, date whoever I want, date how I want. Uh, please me. Please put your mic. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her and committed adultery in her heart already. Now, a lot of single people, they are just looking up all over, you know, saying that I'm single. I can do whatever I want, I can do whatever I want. They go to clubs, they lust after women. You know, it's, a, it's a saying. You should be able to keep yourself. It is much more easier to serve God by yourself. And most people say, oh, I have a desire now to go and get a husband. Jesus is coming. No way. Let me just get married. When we are going, there is no marriage there. You are not giving to a husband. You are not giving to a wife. It's now easier to serve God because now, when you are married now, there are certain things that you have to hold you back now. You have to first consult your husband to do this. You have to first do it. But whereas you want to go into fasting, while you are single now, that is the easiest time to serve God. Marriage is not a bad thing. So he that find a wife. Find it a good thing. Now, it's not only saying to a woman, uh, a man, it's not only talking to a man. That was what looked on a woman. And a woman can also look at a man and lust after him for different filthy worldly reasons. Or oh, because his pants is on his knees and he's walking like a penguin. You know, he's so cute. Oh, I like when boys you know, drag their pants on their knees and they're walking like penguins. You know, it's just, and they use this worldly word, they use it sexy. The first thing that somebody look at you, they say you're sexy, there's a problem. You see, let your light shine so they may see and glorify who glorify your Father in heaven. So if they call you, they say, oh, you're sexy. It does still don't change your mind, the meaning of the word sex. It's like, but that's all they see in you. You're not letting your light shine. That the people may see and glorify God. You know, he has a six pack. Oh, look at the way he's laying. Look at his, his mustache. You know, they are, they are worried about things of the world. That's why they say, present our body, you know, holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Romans 12, verse 1. So, as being single, we should be caring about the things that 
visit the Lord and lusting after each different different people. Women lusting after men, men lusting after women for filthy reasons rather than caring about the things that are pleasing to the world. Some people are more seeking marriage than seeking the kingdom of heaven. But if you cannot live right by yourself, cannot serve God by yourself, how would you have it's more difficult when you get into a marriage, it's more difficult when you get into a relationship. It's tough to serve the Lord because most of the things that you do now you cannot do without, you know, giving a, a reason to your partner and your partner might disagree with it and that those things now might cause well, you know altercations amen first corinthians chapter 7 verse 32 to 35 um let's pick that one let's go to second corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 Second Corinthians six verse what? Fourteen. It says, "Be ye not equally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness?" Amen. Now, some people are asking now, how does this have anything to do with what we're saying? Now, we, some of us are, are going to stand on for a little while. Because the persecution is what the persecution is piling up. Some you will see your sister get married before you, you'll be tempted to say, I'll go and get married to this person. Although it's not a holy, holy, you know, I feel like I can change her. You know, after believing the truth, now you turn away from it. That's what the Bible tells us to what to endure to the end. So while you're seeing all these things happening now, you will be tempted to get involved. Oh, the whole world cannot possibly go to hell because this man is, you know, his child's on his, is on his knees now. Let me just you know, go ahead and get married. But you don't trust the Lord. You're not seeking the Lord. It's pray and the truth, trusting the Lord that, you know, what the Lord can give you the right partner. You're not seeking the for the things of the Lord, the things that are important. Because marriage is only for God. When you go to heaven, well, how many things are you going to remember about marriage? You're not going to, you know, not, I mean, some of us have relationships where, you know, we have been in the ongoing relationships and things have happened. You know, things have happened. Sometimes God knows things happen. God is saying, you know, these things is not meant to be. And, uh, you know, it's that time for me to look up to me and serve you. And you say, oh, because now I have a child with this person. You know, I have to go and. No, you don't have to go and do that. You no, know, especially for the children's sake. Because you go and then uh, you, draw, you draw yourself away from God. Because I had a, you know, I'm going to mention this person. I have a baby. And the baby now needs a father. Let's just get married. The way you know the God, and God is not in the wedding. The trust of God is not in the wedding. It's not a godly relationship, you know. And a lot of people they will, they will, they will compromise the work of God and will get into those situations. And they, I know it's difficult. It's very very tempting. You know? Looking at your son and just saying, "Oh, so uh, uh, mom, where's my father? Oh, father, where's my mom?" But you say you have to consider a few things, you know that. My soul was on the line. My salvation was on I must first seek the Lord. I care. I have to care about the things of the Lord. Mark chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. Mark chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. Mark 12, Mark 12, 25 says, And when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have odds against any, that your father no, comes no, no, no. Mark okay, chapter 12, 2, Mark 12, 25 says, For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage. But as the angels, which are in heaven. Amen. So, when you rise from the dead, when you finish from here, you are not going to get married. You are not going to be given to marriage. But you are going to be as the angels. Put your salvation before you start worrying about marriage. You can serve God where you are, you can serve God right while you're single it's only going to be difficult when you have a partner 
because you have a different way of thinking, a different way of reasoning. Now you have to come together, work together. So, as a single person, you're caring, the most thing you care about is pleasing God. You're not lusting, you're not fornicating, you're not doing this different thing. And a lot of people, that's their focus. I have to keep my Jesus coming back. Look at the words. I'm going right here. I'm going right here on my my ankles. I'm going right into my chin. My ears is going right here. Oh, you know. One well, of my kids say that I'll be 45 before I have my first baby. Because you don't trust the Lord. You don't trust that if you serve God right, you obey Him, walking in the Spirit and you should humble yourself before Him. You have to be in the point that you even say that marriage is just not even by marriage. By the grace of God, if I'm married, I'm married. If I don't, I'm serving God to the end. Because these are the end times. These are the last times. Jesus can come on that day when you're getting married. Hopefully, you're going to compromise his world and you're getting married now to a man and say, Ah, this man is he's almost a holy. He's almost. It's either you're holy or you're not. He's this close, he's this close. When if I marry him now, when if I have him, I have him. I have him. I have a friend now, which is ungodly. 3 a.m., most of the high school students and college students, they are crying in their bed about a breakup. But they are seeing their whole entire month, because they are putting in contest one single thing. 2 3 a.m., they are crying under their sheets because they, 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 they want the person to go. So, as a single person, that's the main focus is to please the Lord. Can we go to second I mean um, let's go to Revelation two verse two. Now let's kind of two verse uh, let's start from two verse two to four. Somebody that they're gonna give some ungodly, and now they're attacked to them. They are more important than God. They have left their first love. Their focus now is not on pleasing God now. Their focus now is saying, I will please God because He gives me this. You don't praise God because of what He gave me. So you praise Him for who He is. He is the most high God, the Alpha and Omega, the King and King God. I will serve God because He gave me Mishibishi Galat. I will serve God because I have the skies to No, he's serving because he's the most high God. And because people have left their first love now, they take their attention now to what worldly things. But that is common. Instead of saying that I will go and repent, I will pass, I will get all the black bread, they just look at yourself, all the temple properties away from my, from my house. I will sanctify my life, I will clean my life, I will protect holiness, I will do all these things. Oh, hope you don't die, Harry. It's I want to get married. Father, Father, please think of the husband. Father, Father, I need a husband. Father, I think at you. I said, I preach my word. You don't want to preach. I said, go out. Okay, you don't want to preach fire. I said, go and pass off life. You don't want to pass off life. They are friends. They are not wanting all these different things. Holiness. They are not striving to be happy. If I now give you a fund on your own, you will not serve me. Oh, no, 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 okay, now. You don't push your way out. You compromise his will and do your own thing. 
I can do whatever I want, I can go to the clubs. And... As a single man, your mind is focused on God. Do not leave your first love. Your first love is Jesus Christ. Marriage, you want marriage, you want work, you want all those things. They are not going to have them in the kingdom of heaven. Okay, and this is it. After this is over, it's done. If it was going to continue again, uh, I guess, but what is going to be? We be just like the angels. So we go to Galatians chapter 5 verse 16. Galatians 5 16 says, This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. The lust of having the flesh. The lust of going to the club being a single. The lust of from the kitchen because you can do whatever I want because you are single. The lot of just getting married with that person that you had an ongoing relationship with because for the sake of your baby now. Oh, there's a person that you slept with, so that means that you have to give up. We must have that things why? Because we don't fully trust that God can give it to us. We don't believe God. God says He'll give us the desires of our hearts, but we don't believe Him. We just kind of believe God a little bit. If we actually totally give ourselves to God, Trust him in everything. He only told us we don't lack anything. And he also tells us, he tells us in John 9, verse 31, he does not hear sinners. He does not hear them. You cannot be like birth at us. And there are some things that prayers, prayer does not work. In. How can you be on top of women fornicating? Oh Lord, oh Lord, hope I don't catch it. You are busy fornicating on women, your prayer, that prayer is not being heard. Take without work is, is, is there. You are still rubbing the bank. Oh Lord, hope I don't get cash I hope I don't get caught by the police. So you are actually praying to one common evil. While you are in the app, you are praying. The prayer is not being heard, neither is the prayer being answered. You know about you know that it's wrong, and you are still committing your act. So what is prayer supposed to do now? Your prayer is in vain. Oh Lord, this relationship like that is ungodly, but I know you will see me too. You will be you will acknowledge the fact that what it is ungodly. And then you're telling God not to see you through an ungodly relationship. Instead of take the stand, he said, Why well, walk in the spirit? If you walk in the spirit, you have no business going to one, you will not see my If you are spiritually minded. So there are some things that you are praying. Sometimes we will pray some prayers and you just look at yourself and say, You have the power. God gave man all things, he said, but he gave man all the things in the earth. We also have to look at him and pray, pray, pray. When you are praying, we are not doing any work to abstain from those things. So what is God going to do? Every day you are praying, you are still praying. Every day you are still praying for the future. You have to take a step. If you need to move, you move. God will not help me say, God is not here, you are praying, you are on top of the woman. You are going to enjoy it, and you are praying to God. That prayer is an abomination for the most high God. First John chapter two verse sixteen. First John chapter two verse fifteen. Sixteen. And somebody has not read me, please. First John chapter 2, verse 16. For all that is in the world, 
the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. Mm-hmm. Well, what I know the lust of the flesh to fulfill the lust by fornicating. The lust of the eyes, oh, that man like this now, one of the six pack has diamonds on him. Look at that girl's belly button, you know, very, very soft and nice. Oh, look at the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. You see what was in the pride of the life, the pride of life. Oh, now I want to go and get married to this one. I've been having a lonely relationship. So, you know, it's not a Christian, just so that some people can say that they have. You people have a great son, you people have a great family, and don't want people to look at me like a, a man of shower. All those Christian things are pride of life. Oh, my boyfriend is a football player, he's a quarterback, he can throw in a post down from any corner of the field. He's a football star, he can dribble five people in the field. I, I'm intimidating him now. Even though I'm a Christian, even though I'm a student, you know, I can basically now be popular in my school and everybody will be. All this is a part of life. It's not of the other thing, of the world. We are not seeking out to true God. That is, I'm a saint. I'm a child of God. We are not married. But you're having a good relationship. And we are, we are a so called saint. Let us flee, flee from these things. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. The Lord. Flee also youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Amen. You see, flee from youthful lusts. I've been knowing uh, in Funanga since I was five. Our Lord has gone far. I remember five years, we were only five years old. We were really kissing. My mom was only telling me to be my wife. In Funanya like this, she is, since primary school, we have been together. Today, it's time for you to leave in Funanya and serve God. I've been known he came in Funa. He came in that I had some boys since eighth grade. I remember back in, you know, in my, during my ninth grade, we used to go to the swings. I used to play love me, love me. Today, it's time for you to be he came for now and said God. Because why? The trumpet of the Lord will sound any moment from now. And if Nanya, if Nanya or he came for now, it will not matter. He will stand in front of the most high God. And he will judge you according to this word of God. This word that we are studying, these things that we are preaching. All these things, we are going to be judged by it. That's what tell us to what? To flee from beautiful lust. But to what? To follow after righteousness. A righteous man having a baby. Huh? Not for pain. Faith, charity, peace. We it will do. I'm saying you don't call on the Lord. <clears throat> and read this thing, I still do that. He said, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Your heart must be clean. Your heart must be willing to leave these things. Your heart must be willing to leave these things. You are watching things on the internet. God is not going to come down from heaven and say, Oh, behold, let me carry you out of that chair. He will lead you to what? To flee from what? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 22. To flee from beautiful lust. To flee from this thing. All forms of evil, all forms of evil to flee from it. Oh God, I'm watching this thing like this. I know that, you know, God, I'm having this boyfriend. I know that 
So what will God do? God has given you the word. So God should come down and say, Oh, behold, thou shalt not be. God is not going to do that. He's giving you the word. And that, that's, what, that's what the word is supposed to do. If you study it, you walk in it. You are prayerful. You are pastor. You are, you are doing everything to ask him this thing. God will strengthen you. Say, God, give me the strength to go through this. Give me the strength to handle this thing. Give me the strength to continue and do all things. Give me this. Now God will say, ah, that man is speaking from a pure heart. And your Gabriel, go down and help our servant. Go down and help my servant. He say, ah, God, I'm so my servant. Hey, I'm so is preaching my gospel in my time. My soul is abstaining from fornication. My soul is living with righteous clean life. When I'm so bowed down before God, I say, Father, I need that scholarship. Say, Angel Gabriel, go down and grab my son a scholarship. Father, I need to. So, that even also wrote this thing, because he has that desire, I'm just giving an example. He has that desire, that passion, that, that fire in him to serve God, to live a clean, righteous life, a calling from God out of a pure heart. Say, so, Lord, I don't have a job. You say, good or whatever, whichever angel is there in command, go down, go forth, and help my son. And you get it when you are calling God now with the things he has. You still have properties of the devil. You still have lost new desire. All these ungodly things. Instead of fixing your mind on him, to be keeping yourself pure, knowing that the end times are coming, the trumpet is about to sound. You call on God, God is taking you like a joke. This one, this one like this. You call on me like two minutes later, you go back and watch that thing. Two minutes later, you go in trouble. And you come back there and go on. I've been praying for five months. Why are you doing my prayer? You are fornicating your girlfriend. You are eating it for fornicating. You and he. So it's time for you to leave all these things. All these, you know, all these things you move to draw people into unnecessary relationships. This thing, man, you want to see all these things. And then you start feeling the wound. I need now a boyfriend that can tell me that I'm a sugar banana. So he call you sugar banana, then just make us all do. You can be, you'll be a hell banana. So it's time now to, to, to sanctify our lives. Actually, I've seen it. We're very lucky as we to know this truth before we actually get onto different things and certain things later on in life. Now we know how to choose and get a relationship. We know how to provide the process of marriage. We know how to do all these things now. We know how to do most people are really in it and they are struggling. We that we are not in it, we are youths. We should be wise before we get into it. We should be one, we should be smart before we get into it. Because we are lucky. We now know the truth. It's good to um Hebrews chapter four and six to seven. Philippians 4 and 67. Praise the Lord. Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known unto God. Be careful of nothing. Don't know after this thing. And especially single youth as we as youth right now. We are also I assume we are all single. I hope we are all single. To be careful of nothing. But in everything by word, by prayer and supplication, supplication with thanksgiving. Not with grieving attitude, double mindedness. With thanksgiving, let your request be known unto God. Live for God. Give a clean sacrifice life. Focus on serving. Walk in the with a pure heart for God. That was man, you want to only ask man you have. You want a Jeep? I don't guarantee one of them, but I know you have better ones than him. Walk in the cleanness of heart. A simple life, a sanctified life of God. Let your request be known to Him. 
I guarantee you. <laughs> but let's not be a liar, which is not God forbid. It will not in it. He will give us music. But I want this in people. But I want him to give it to me. Look at the Bible, look at the Bible. Look at all the righteous people. From Genesis to Revelation. The people that were righteous. You think that they were poor people. The people that serve God in spirit and the you, you look at the Bible, you maybe poor people were most of them poor people. But the riches that people go after and the glass things that people go after today is of evil desire, an evil act. That's why now God is telling us not to worry about those things. Because my most of the you see the people flying in five meters. Two, three months. Even the righteous man should never want anything like that. Because those things might draw in the news of the father. From seven. They have a five prime They are around the world poor. For years and years, no prayer, no fast, no worship. They're claiming for the They're claiming they are even bring their kids up in the world. Their back is not peace on seven God. But they work every day. Every single day from country to country, living a lavish lifestyle, celebrity life, cameras every day, cursing, drinking, tattooing. They are caring for the They don't trust God. They don't believe in God. They don't take a moment to say, Father, I will fast for two days. Father, but all these things. We don't, we don't care. We don't even care for I don't know who's that king was it King Solomon but he served God. And God asked him a question. To ask him of anything. His prayer was simple. Most of us would say, God asked me, God told me that I asked for anything. Hey, let me put in my list. I want a husband, I want a car, a jeep, a mission, a I don't know if anybody had that that's the truth. God asked him a question. God said, What do you? He said, Are you trying to ask me anything because he has walked in you? Then he has served them in truth. But King Solomon has gone by. I think it was King Solomon, if I'm not mistaken. To give him the mind to learn, to judge the people. That's it. Because now we are so focused on this liberty lifestyle. We are so focused now on the flash, the latest cards. We are forgotten the God we serve, especially a single book. We see that now we have the freedom. Please, Virgin, give me a one. One minute, one minute ago. Just give me a second. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, like I was saying, when King Solomon, when God asked King Solomon to ask him to, when God asked Solomon to ask him for whatever, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's go to Second. Can somebody please go with me? Uh, okay, Second Chronicles chapter one, verse. Let's start from verse six to nine. Let's see, 6 to 11. Sister Evelyn, are you on? So please can you please get me a second round of coach chapter one verse six to eleven. I don't know what's going on with the burden today. Mm-hmm. 
says that uh, and Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In that night did God appear unto Solomon, and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shewed great mercy unto David thy father, my father, and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before these people. For who can judge this thy people that is so great? And God said unto Sol said to Solomon, Because this was in thine heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, or hast asked wisdom and knowledge. For thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made the king. Verse 12. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches and wealth, and honor such as none of the kings have had, and have been before thee, neither shall there any after thee have the life. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And God appeared unto Solomon. Now, the Lord now appeared unto Solomon, and he asked, he said, and he said unto him, he said, Ask what I shall give you. Ask me anything, and I will give you. But most of us will say, Ah, I want a mansion now. I want, give me this, give me that. So most of us were asking for these different things, but there was only one thing, two things that King Solomon asked him. Verse 10, he said, now give me now wisdom and knowledge. That's something that nobody can take away from you. Wisdom and knowledge. God gave him the opportunity, the King the opportunity to give him any, to get anything that he wanted. But his mind was not fixed on the world. His mind was not fixed on these things. But my point was wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come before his people. He was seeking for, for the things of God, seeking to please God. For who can judge thy people? That is so good now. That's what God would want. That's what God would care for. For most of you think all these riches and stuff like that. And God said to King Solomon, because this was in your heart, you have a pure heart, a desire to serve me. The desire to help my people, to judge my people, to watch my people are living right. I want, I know, and thou hast not asked the riches, wealth, or honor, nor the life of thy enemies. Neither yet has asked long life, but has asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself. It's not looking to that wisdom and knowledge. You know, you know the word of God. You know how to serve God. You serve God. There's nothing that you lack. You are going to places where you have your mind shown so that you can go. You are walking on gold. Wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou may judge my people over whom I may be king. And what did God say? Wisdom and knowledge is granted. One of the wisest man in his Bible. You think that King Solomon was a poor man? Let's keep reading. I will give thee what? Riches and wealth and honor. Can you go and most people? They get their riches from doing evil things today. But this is the right way. You serve God and God rewarded him. Such as we know of the kings that had before, and neither shall they, and any after they have like. Nobody shall have the like King Solomon. Nobody. Why? Because he had a pure heart. Desire was to please the Lord. 
Now, King Solomon, Father, King Solomon will not take God. Give me a wife. Oh, give me a nice girlfriend. Her buttocks have to be size 20. Her heels have to be 14 inches. No. God, simple. Give me wisdom and knowledge. Because with wisdom and knowledge, knowledge is power. If, I, if you have those things, you can do more with it. Riches, they will go away. Cars, all these things, when airplane, private jet, they will go away. Your girlfriend will die someday. But that wisdom will stick in that head until you go, until God says, come home. So, what are we saying? That single people, let us sing to, to, to please God. Simple so, how to please the Lord in everything. When I start this very things, Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 to 34. We have a couple more. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 to 34. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 to 34 Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Ah, why are you worrying? You make yourself look at the cars that people create. Do the cars they wake up every morning and worry that who will change my oil, who will wash me, who will change my engine? The cars, no worry. The know that my owner that bought me will take care of me. The owner that bought me will change my engine oil. Same thing with God. The God that created you will grant you the desires of your heart. If the car does not run well, the owner will let go of the car. The owner has to sell the car. You don't sell God right. You think that God will continue to 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 God will say, Ah, you don't want to serve me now. I'll I'll give you warning, so but if you don't want to serve me now, fine. Then you can go ahead and keep serving it though. But you will meet me soon. You don't want to run well when well, this car is bad. You have to sell it. You have to pound it or something. Because why the car is not serving the purpose you made you bought it to do. The car keeps breaking down this and that. And it, but the car never worries that oh what will I do? Then my my master will not change my oil. When it's right time to change that oil, the master will know. The owner of that car will go and change the oil. When the car is dirty and it's right time to wash that car, the car, the owner will take that car to the proper Please, to wash and cleanse the car. The same thing with God. When it's the right time to receive, God will grant you. But why? You must first know the purpose. And you must first serve God. Then you go to uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7. First Peter chapter five verse seven says, "Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you." Be careful, you cast everything upon him. He wants you to put it on him. He came, he came, he came for that purpose. But why? Why not using him? My strength shall no man prevail. Psalm chapter thirty-five verse five. We have to move fast. The present to the I don't know what's going on. Uh, Psalm chapter 37 verse 5. Psalm 
Psalms chapter 37 verse 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord, trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Well, commit thy way unto the Lord. You commit thy way to that door for him, to him for him, yeah. He came in for him. I'm using those words because these are my favorite names. So don't commit your way to them. Yet, you are a single man, you are a holy man, righteous man of God. Commit your way to who to the Lord. Focus, fix your eyes on serving God. Don't worry about your life. Take no thought of your life. Who you will marry, what you will do tomorrow. Who I'm poor, I need to go and get married to the rich man, so he can take care of my family. Oh no, I need to go and get married to a doctor, so that my family will be out of this poverty that we are in. Take thought of your life, don't worry about those things. If you don't have those things, on the same way. It would be good if somebody said that Donald Trump, he, he is a rich man, but he serves God. I, I want to be like Donald Trump. If it's only Trump and, and they are proven. They say, oh, Donald Trump is the richest man in the world. He prays five times a day. He's working in holiness. He's living in righteousness. I would want to be Donald Trump. I say, okay, I want to be strong. I want to be like Donald Trump. When you look at the lifestyles, most of them are atheists. They don't do a degree in this. Master degree, all those things will come down to nothing. Because why? They do not serve God. They don't want to serve God anymore in spirit and in truth. They're after all the things of this world. They have left their first love. They're after worldly things instead of things that will help the Lord, help you to serve God. You cannot serve God when you're serving, you cannot serve God when you're not. It's much more difficult. Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 33. Let's start from Matthew chapter 6, verse 21, then we'll go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 32. Go ahead, we have, uh, I think, about 10 more minutes. <coughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Seek to please the Lord. Seek all these things. God, let me first have a girlfriend. Let me put a good person for 15 years, God. I will serve you when I get to five. God, let me drink and let me smoke for about 10 years, God. I will serve you when I'm 40. That is telling you to first what? To first seek the king. Let me first get married before you come back. First, the kingdom of the in all these things shall be added unto you. Live a clean life. Have a pure heart. All these things will be added unto you. That's a promise from the Most High God. Try Him and see. Test Him. Actually, live a holy life. And if any of us live a holy life, completely clean, sanctified life, and God has not given us, given us anything that we desire of our heart, some of us are still living in different, different things. May God is merciful. He's a merciful God. He has given us things that we don't even deserve. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Ah, your treasure is still on earth. Your treasure is still on earth. You are looking, well, looking to leave this place. The trunk is somewhere in the middle. Where is your treasure? Where is our treasure? Let's ask, ask yourself, listen, where is my treasure? Where is my mindset? Where is my heart set? Is my heart set on the things of this world or on the things of God? The things of heaven? I don't know. Where your treasure is, is where your heart will also be. Oh, let me first marry you. For God say, okay, marry you. But you don't want to stop saying, you're okay, go and marry you. I come back, I wouldn't leave you there. That's where your heart is. That's where your treasure is now. Okay, I will leave you there. You don't have to first work, see the things of what of me. So when I come back, I go ahead and get married. When I come back now, those are the people that are we willing to give up those things for myself. The people that will sacrifice those things to live in holiness. Don't you think that is a good thing? But 
trusting the Lord as youths, as people, knowing that the end times is here, those things are being. It's not like I'll keep my wife in heaven anyway. Oh, my wife, let us have more kids. No, we are in heaven. I'm an angel. I don't want, I don't even want to. I want to just go to the river of life, swim all day, walk on go, and spend time in my mansion, singing praises, and maybe doing whatever God asked me to do. That's what I want to do. When anybody, any wife bothering me, we need to be important. We need this, we need that. No, I'm in heaven, I'm enjoying my mansion, I'm riding my chariot, I'm doing things. I'm worrying about the heavenly things. And that's what we as saints right now should be worrying about. People that are single, when the time comes and start thinking myself, go go and find out why they try to do this. Go and find out what's my God will find you. But you must first don't worry about those things. Those things are lost. The pride of life, all those things, they are not of power. Saving with holiness in spirit and the truth, and why all those things shall be added on to me. So, probably the most high word is to be us now. But remember, the righteous man is not to worry about the best class, the things of his world. He's being worried about what? The heavenly things. Instead of God, he'll give you things here, and he'll give you things in heaven. It's easier to serve God now as a single person. Because if you know what you can now, go with the marriage will be better. You will be far better than somebody who maybe you will go in now they are trying to perfect their lives. The husband is fighting against the wife. The wife is fighting against the husband. Because they have the agreement of this. Every day church church. You are fasting 40 days. I don't want to do this. You must go. You must do this. So now it's time to perfect this in heaven. We're going to Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. Matthew 5, verse 10. Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. This is a day in which a persecutor for righteousness' sake, for tears is the kingdom of heaven. Well, uh, amen. He yeah, addressed that like mother, Mary, Mary, mother of God. Uh, I don't care, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, somebody just like that. Bless are you. Oh, you're not sucking your pants. You have no swagger. You have shoes from pillars. Bless are you. You are not worried about the things of this world. Oh, your haircut is not like Bruce Lee. Oh, you cannot, you are not, you are not dressing like a little way. Bless are you. You are persecuted for righteousness because why? You are, you are dying in the flesh. You are not worried about the things of the world. Oh, your mates are having five, ten girlfriends. Your mates are there. They are, you know, they are getting married. And you are sitting over here, breaking all this holy, holy, believing thing. Bless are you. You are blessed. Don't need that blessing. That's the blessing from God. Wait on the Lord, and you will get everything that you want. Blessed are you. So why are you, why are you worried? You are blessed. You are being persecuted over for righteousness' sake. Oh, your mates are ruining up their marijuana every day. They are making it holy, holy thing. My must enjoy life. Bless are you. You are keeping me, you are, you are keeping me, you are worried about the temple of the Lord. We cannot go clubbing. You are going to pray five times. You are going to pray six times. You are amazing to go to the club just because of one single prayer. Leave that prayer, let's go now. I'm going to find you a good club. Bless are you. Leave that club and go and go before your God and seek those things. Bless are you. That's a blessing from God that people turn down with. That's a blessing. To live right for God is a blessing. But why do you go and do the commandments of God are not doing yours? He doesn't know all your heart. You have a desire to serve your comfort, your pure heart, your possessing the things, the pride of life, all these things. You are living a simple life. You are being persecuted for it. It's only that you are blessed for it and you are crying. You know? What? That's a blessing from God. Take the blessing. Amen. Last verse I want to go now. It's uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. <coughs> John chapter 14, verse 27. It says, Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the word give it, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ah, yeah, you, have, you have made your heart be troubled and you have made your heart be afraid. I'm getting old now, don't get married. You are worried. 
God is trouble. You are afraid that you will not get married because you will not find a holy man because you don't have trust in God. You are afraid. You are afraid that if you continue to walk in holiness, righteousness, and truth, you will not be desirous of this life. You will not have that in, 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 in husband that you want. You will not have that car that you want. You will not have those things that you want. You feel like you have to fraud and do all these things because why? You are afraid. Your heart is troubled. Your heart is troubled because why? You are not totally healed. You are not totally trusting God that God will grant you desires of your heart. God is trying your heart and you are feeling every time. All your friends are prospering, you are down. Why? Because for righteousness sake, you are feeling bad. For righteousness sake, your friends are falling, you are going to talk with them. in Canada, we are still stuck in Nigeria and in Chad. Oh, in Chad, this sun is burning by. I wish I was in Sona riding. For righteousness sake, you are staying back. You say, so I want to wait on God the right time. Your friends are falling, they are born this, they have done all this for us and everything. For righteousness sake, you are feeling bad. Let us wait on God. Let us not feel bad because we are being possessed in righteousness sake. Let us not. You see, peace I leave with you. My peace. It's peace I give. You see, I give that to you. Not as the world gives it. He's not giving to you like the world. The world people need you. His gifts are great. They're not. I give. Unto you, you see what? As long as I give unto you, let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled, you have trouble in those things. Focus on serving God. Focus on salvation. Walking in spirit and in truth and why? God will grant you the desires of your heart in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.